This is Public Occurrences, both foreign and domestic. And now your host, Michael O'Fallon. Our education system in the West has been in the process of transforming and transitioning from an education about facts, about objective truth, about science that has been defined through the scientific method, and about history that seeks to know the truth about what actually happened, to an education system that is about subjective hyper-reality, that builds in generative themes and is about manipulating the minds of men. Since the first moment that I met Dr. James Lindsay, one of his primary goals has been to explain, expose, and fix what is wrong with our institutions of education, both in childhood education and as well in higher education and research. And my interaction with Dr. Lindsay and his friend Peter Bogosian began in 2018. And as I have explained in the past... My first introduction to their scholarship was via a video on YouTube that began playing in my YouTube feed after a Jordan Peterson lecture on Derrida and Foucault had ended. And what I heard was exactly what needed to be said about our current civilizational crisis, and what the actual issues were with intersectional thought. And... I readily admit that intersectionality was difficult for me to see from the perspective of social deconstruction because when I was first introduced to intersectionality way back in 2008 and from thenceforward into 2011 and 2012, intersectionality was always proposed in corporate discussions as a financial tool and an understanding of how to determine risk factors of loan distribution fairness and a way to avoid the mistakes that were made that led to the 2008 economic crisis. But there was some Marxist poison in the well of intersectionality that seemed to be there without a doubt, and I became quite aware of that. And as 501c3s and 501c4s were encouraged by Open Societies Foundations to embrace intersectionality around 12 years ago with promises of grant money if they did so, Well, then the floodgates opened, especially in education, and in many cases in Christian education and in private faith-based schools. And there had always seemed to be something rather Augustinian about the structure of intersectionality. But I couldn't necessarily explain this in such a way that didn't confuse the people that I was speaking to back in those days. In many ways, I'd kind of get lost in the concepts, if you will. I knew something was terribly wrong, and I wanted to hear from others how they would explain it, and it always ended up in quite a bit of confusion, but more or less that there was a religious model that was being somehow forwarded for the purposes of something that was resembling equity but not equality. But then again, in 2018, when I heard James Lindsay explain how intersectionality actually works, using a religious framework, I knew I had to speak with him. But one of the things that came up in my first few meetings with Dr. Lindsay and Dr. Pagoshin was the issue of critical pedagogy. And one of the names that kept on being raised was a name that was somewhat familiar to me. And the name is Paulo Ferreri. Some would say Ferreri. Now, I had previously heard the name Paulo Ferreri from a few places. Firstly, well, first I should provide an explanation of the memory that I have been both blessed and cursed with. It is a rather advanced form of a autobiographical memory, but not quite the -the off-the-charts type of hyperthymesia like actress Marilu Henner possesses, let's say. So I remember things almost like I am playing back a movie in my mind. Many of those who have worked with me in the past would understand that I refer to that quite a bit. It's like a movie in my mind. But even more intensely, 
When I think back to an event, I can vividly remember the smells, the sounds, discussions, and the things that I saw and witnessed. It isn't the infallible memory that someone like Mary Lou Henner possesses, but it is pretty much like a one-camera shoot of a scene. I should remark that this was the mistake of my past clients, by the way, thinking that it was okay to have me in their meetings over a decade ago. But anyway, I have a tendency to not forget things, particularly when I am paying attention and I'm not distracted. So, long story short, I remember when I was just a boy, And my mom took me to a continuing education seminar from Pinellas County Schools. And I remember quite vividly the cover of the book, Pedagogy of the Oppressed. I remember it very clearly. And I also remember hearing the presenter fumbling the name Ferreri and pronouncing it differently maybe three or four different times, just like all of us do. Now, that was like four decades ago. And I even remember what my mom was wearing that day. I don't forget things when I'm paying attention. And some of my frenemies might want to remember that. But let's now go from the 70s and fast forward to the late 80s and early 90s, when I was struggling with trying to figure out why the Roman Catholic Church was so incredibly inconsistent. And reading quite a bit on the Red Bishop, the Integralist, semi-fascist, full-on neo-Marxist Dumhelder Camara, the Bishop of Recife, Brazil, who had a tremendous influence on another man who was involved in education. And that weird last name that gets all caught up in your mouth was present again, Paulo Ferreri. And there was mutual influence, as Dumhelder Camara was teaching the world how to catechize everyone into his Marxified version of Christianity. And, as well, Dom Helder Camara was, at the time, developing a methodology and a curriculum with similar Marxian flair in education. And they both ended up in the same place at around the same time at one point. I'm not referring to Recife, Brazil, but Geneva, Switzerland. Anyway, so I had some degree of familiarity with Ferrari, but James Lindsay was about to make my distant memory, the VHS version in 480p, he was going to transform that and bring it into crystal clear 8K resolution. And what I have learned from James in regards to Ferrari over the years, and I have now read both, by the way, Critical Pedagogy and The Politics of Education, And the politics of education is the one that really gets me. And we'll talk about that some other time. But it has really helped me to have a full-orbed understanding of the how, the methodology of programming a generation of students with Ferrarian thought. And as I read the advanced copy of Dr. Lindsay's latest book, The Marxification of Education, which I believe is most likely the most important book written on the subject of education and the infusion of a critical consciousness into students that's ever been written. And I say this because what it describes in regards to Ferrarian methodology is applicable today in early childhood education, in primary education, in university-level education, and even in research and legal studies. And it is as well the Ferrarian methodology that has bled into our seminaries and Christian education. You might want to go back and listen to that interview that Dr. Muller did with James Lindsay back a few years ago. There's no one else that I've ever seen or heard that could track with Dr. Lindsay on Ferrarian methodology. But Dr. Muller did. Something to note. Well, heck, much of what Ferrari developed as a method is in our Sunday school models. And Ferrari's concept of critical pedagogy has been popularized by Ferrari's Apostle Paul, Henry Giroux. And yes, by the way, the cover art of the Marxification of Education is a very well-placed poke in the eye of Henry Giroux. And his pedagogy series of books like On Critical Pedagogy, 
and as well, the pedagogy of resistance. So with all of that being said, now, with that background, let's dive into this groundbreaking book. It's going to be hitting the earth like a comet. The Marxification of Education. Dr. Lindsay states the following, quote, Polyferary Marxified education itself, that is, he turned pedagogy into a Marxist theory and turned the very concepts of education, literacy, and knowledge into sites of Marxian social analysis. This is not equivalent to inserting Marxism or Marxist ideas into curricula, nor is it the same as revamping education into a Marxist indoctrination, as many believe. It is a far deeper shift in the theory of education that has redefined how we educate our students throughout the United States, and now around the world. As noted, the closest parallel is to the brainwashing thought reform in Maoist re-education prisons and schools. The theft of education we have been discussing is enabled by precisely this Marxification, which repurposes education from within. Now, an introduction into Marxism as a mode of thought for those who are not familiar, a general overview of Marxist theory, is in order. In simplest possible terms, Marxism can be presented in two pieces. The first of these is a general theory of how class society operates, and the second of these is what can be done about it. The first is Marx's peculiar dialectical conception of the world, the view of the absolute man, and conflict-oriented sociology, and the second is the seizing of the means of production to transform society according to to its Marxist ultimate purpose. Marx's view of how class society is organized and operates, in greatest generality, posits the existence of a special kind of bourgeoisie. End quote. So Dr. Lindsay explains that the very concept of education or how to educate has been repurposed, repurposed for the cause of enlightening those being educated with the concepts of Marxism. And he explains how this has come about. And it comes about across all levels of education in his introduction to the first chapter where he states the following, quote, Much of the theory and practice of education, pedagogy, employed today in Northern American schools is derived directly, with certain contextual updates and modifications, from the work of a Brazilian Marxist radical by the name of Paulo Ferreri. While Ferreri isn't exactly a household name in the United States, He is a household name and figure of educational legend in all North American colleges of education. So is his approach, which is called critical pedagogy, or critical education theory. In colleges of education throughout North America, in fact, Ferreri is revered and his work is considered virtually sacrosanct. It has accordingly been incredibly influential because of his incredible sway in North American Colleges of Education, Paulo Ferreri is recognized as the third most cited scholarly author in all of the humanities and social sciences by authoritative metrics. It exaggerates none at all to state that Paulo Ferreri is at the center of everything happening in Colleges of Education today and from there our nation schools. A succinct way to phrase the consequences of his influence on education is that our kids go to Paulo Ferreri schools. What this means is nothing short of the theft of education. Something that looks like education remains, but it is no longer education. It is political brainwashing to see the world, quote, on the side of the oppressed, end quote. And I would pause here to state that rather than follow the bandwagon approach that many advocate today of just creating a scapegoat that has nothing to do with our problems that we are experiencing today, that the preferred method would be to actually read and research the why, how, and when behind the mess that should be understood so you will know how to defeat the problem in education or at least speak intelligently about the issues. But I digress. Dr. Lindsay continues, quote, 
So central to his views is the transformation of education that Ferreri's magnum opus bears the description of it in the title. It is the pedagogy of the oppressed, in which educators and learners together are instructed to, quote, die and be resurrected, end quote, on the side of the oppressed and into a, quote, faith, end quote, in permanent struggle. And once again, if I may, Dr. Lindsay is very clear that this is filled with classical themes from faith, because this entire mess is a faith, but it is not Christianity at all. It is rather a simulacrum of Christianity, a parasite of what Christianity was to scholasticism. Now let's get back to the book. Dr. Lindsay continues by saying this, quote, Students are transformed into learners who learn virtually nothing except two things. Number one, how to view the world from the standpoint of the oppressed. And number two, to denounce the dehumanizing conditions of the world as seen from that perspective in a way that simultaneously announces the potential for something better, in other words, better meaning more socialist, equitable, and socially just, But the mechanism for this theft of education was straightforward and generational. Capture and transform the colleges of education. Mold a generation of teachers. Program every generation of students thereafter. Colleges of education were captured almost entirely to the Ferrarian approach by no later than 1995. And the intervening quarter century has seen enough turnover of the teachers to have fundamentally remade our schools and thus education itself. Kids still go to school, but school isn't school anymore. The teachers have been replaced with activists, and education has been turned into conscientization, the process of seeing the world from the so-called standpoint of the oppressed. End quote. And if I may... This is one of the most important takeaways from the book itself. Conscientization is the process of infusing critical consciousness into a student. This is what has happened on a mass scale, not just in public schools, but in private schools and higher seminaries of faith as well. Dr. Lindsay continues, Quote, Many of the major seemingly faddish but broadly dominant developments in education today have roots that can be traced back in whole or in part to Paulo Ferreri. These include especially the abysmal performance in achieving at grade level competency in most subjects, in most classes, in most schools, misplaced curricular emphases, the rampant data mining of children through relentless surveys and assessments, though these serve other purposes as well, by the way, culturally relevant and responsive teaching, decolonizing the curriculum, student-led project-based learning, and social-emotional learning, especially transformative social-emotional learning. Other programs, like Comprehensive Sexuality Education, CSE for short, including the abominable practice of Drag Queen Story Hour, in which drag queens, adult men dressed as clown form sexualized women, do drag performances for children while reading to them in school libraries and classrooms, graft themselves onto the Ferrarian generative method. It is because of this methodological approach that they are able to do what they do and to justify their inclusion in early childhood education. Some of these trends are direct and intended consequences of Ferrarian pedagogy. These include focusing on social issues through broadly Marxian social theories like critical race theory, the democratic, that is, ungovernable classroom, and the grooming of children into critically conscious activist change agents. These are the reasons Ferrarian pedagogy was developed in the first place. Other trends are an indirect but not necessarily unintended result of applying Ferrari's pedagogy. For example, Ferreri's approach does not directly intend to cause the readily observed widespread underperformance of students across virtually every grade level and virtually every core academic competency. 
reading, writing, mathematics, scientific literacy, historical literacy, and civics in particular, but it contributes significantly to it. Part of this failure probably isn't intended. Ferreri claims his program is about literacy, and yet this failing result is reliable from his method. This is because Ferreri's method simply gets education wrong, misprioritizes the classroom and educational purpose, and disengages students from academic learning objectives in favor of political activism. End quote. And if I may, what do you think has been going on in seminaries, and as well as even Sunday schools, in the Southern Baptist Convention and Reformed Theological Seminary over the past years? Dr. Lindsay continues, quote, On the other hand, part of this result probably is intended, since Ferrari indicts all other models of education as leading to the reproduction of the society he wants to see overthrown in cultural revolution. That is, Ferreri doesn't want education that teaches people how to be successful in a society he wants to see cast down, end quote. So in The Marxification of Education, Dr. Lindsay is explaining that Ferreri's critical pedagogy is a tool of transformation through generative themes. Education has been stolen from us and from our young and from students everywhere, Yes, stolen. It was deliberately transformed from within into something that is barely education at all anymore. Instead, it's a systematic program of thought reform. Yes, brainwashing into neo-Marxist belief and activism. Now, how has this been accomplished? Well, the formal name for the transformation is called the critical turn in education, which turned education from traditional models of pedagogy to critical pedagogy. The application and teaching of, let's say, critical theory to and through the education system. And its purpose is to overcome what Marx has referred to as the problem of reproduction by which stable societies reproduce themselves from one generation to the next, especially through institutions involving children like religion, family, media, and especially education. And so, if Christians all of a sudden decide to withdraw and create their own autonomous zones, you will remove the lampstand. And it will be critical pedagogy that will be able to reproduce Marxist concepts without the least bit of resistance. But maybe the thought of that isn't as strong as wanting to continue to LARP as a crusader. Now, one of the words that Dr. Lindsay has used over the past year and a half to describe what has been happening with Ferrarian methodology being employed especially in the sexualization of children is grooming which is now widely banned across social media. Now, as a result, along with James Lindsay being banned from Twitter, but now he's back, but by calling this problem out. Now, in the Marxification of education, which is its remaking into a system of Marxist conscientization, schools can be said to have been transformed really into groomer schools. Specifically, while the terms thought reform and brainwashing have been used in the past to describe this process, the term that James came up with, the term grooming, is even more applicable given the nature of the process of conscientization, including its specific subject matter. It's a tremendous problem a problem that really demands our understanding, and then a solution. So let me provide for you a brief synopsis of the book that was provided by Dr. Lindsay himself in The Marxification of Education. This is kind of a short form of what it's all about. Quote, number one, the Ferrarian method can be summarized as following four distinct steps. So, number one is, again, number one is identification of generative themes. 
And in this step, dialogue surveys and provocations are used with students to identify words, concepts, and themes that have political relevance in their real lives. That is, it is a practice of data mining students to find political source spots relevant to their lives. Ferreri insists that this method take place between educators and learners as equals. And the purpose is to identify politically, socially, and emotionally relevant ideas that can be used to encourage conscientization of the political context of their lives. Obviously, given the goal, these themes are usually negative and pick at points of potential political grievance that have been data mined out of the students. Number two presentation of the generative themes in codified form. In this step, the contents of the generative themes are fed back to the students in an abstract or codified form. Ferreri recommends picture form, since he was teaching literacy and couldn't expect his students to read. In the American education system, this might take the form of reading materials, vocabulary lists, contoured subject matter lessons like history through the 1619 Project, and math through ethnomathematics, and special presentations, even the now infamous Drag Queen Story Hour program refers to the purpose of the introduction of drag queens into schools as a generative method for queer politics. The goal of this step is to spur dialogue about the politically sensitive topics after presenting them in a way that might facilitate the goal of conscientization, which again means that you are trying to develop a critical consciousness. Number three, Marxist analysis of the codified themes called decodification. And in this step, the codifications from the previous step are problematized, which means subjected to Marxist analysis in dialogical format between learners and educators acting as facilitators and then made personal to the students. This process is done in a way that always tends towards conscientizing the students, which is to say teaching them to interpret their circumstances through a Marxist perspective, to apply them to their own lives and to become activists to change those circumstances. In an experimental study of the Ferrarian adult literacy method in Nigeria, by the end of this stage, students were reported to be emotional wrecks who only wanted to be activists and had no interest in learning to read. End quote. Let me butt in there for a second. Maybe you understand now what's been done, what's been created. Basically, you've created a red guard of young people with one generation of people. The only thing that they want to do is be activists. They want to make change. Let's go back. Dr. Lindsay continues, quote, number four, academic instruction through the aforementioned structure. Ferrari insists that the high level of engagement produced by the method will result in students using the generative themes, or words, as a basis for wanting to learn the subject matter and doing so thoroughly. An example would be the one from Nigeria that we just mentioned. But they don't bear this hypothesis out. Ferreri insists that they will both learn the relevant academic material and become politically conscious, or Marxist, if you will. And in truth, only the second of these aims the ignoble and destructive one, seems to be achieved by this method. Again, the Ferrarian method of education is not an educational method at all. It is a means for politically grooming the perspective of students into a Marxist mindset, including to become activists. It is not only Marxist programming, but an abject failure in all respects and has no place in American schools. End quote. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the book that will change the discussion regarding education in the West. It is a nuclear bomb over the top of the Marxifying of our society. It will be the most referred to book in PTA meetings. It will be used by 
Moms for Liberty, and nearly all of their interaction with school boards. It is the examination and tearing apart of the playbook of our adversaries. It is the most important book, other than the Bible, that you must read this December. It is available today. It is a laser-focused weapon that we have in our armory, and you must become familiar with the contents of The Marxification of Education by Dr. James Lindsay, because we must win. I'm Michael O'Fallon, and this has been Public Occurrences Both Foreign and Domestic. Thank you.